Hello, and welcome back to DUFC's Quarantine Time Q&A. In this our final video in the series, Max and Milner will answer your question about being a fencer during the lockdown. The video is a bit long, so we put the timestamps for each question in the description below, so you can skip ahead to whatever interests you the most. I hope you enjoy. Now over to Max. Uh, my season wasn't overwhelmingly successful, but it wasn't an overwhelming failure. Um, so I, I was, I've been doing enough, if that makes sense. Uh, and um, yeah, so for the domestics, uh, April is a really big month in British fencing. So you have nationals, you have one of the big opens and you have a, uh, a domestic EPE event that has a lot of points going for it. So actually uh, between that and the Buenos Aires World Cup in March and the uh, Paris World Cups in May, I was actually entering the second half of the season uh, because really it's sort of groups between September and December, you know, September to November and then roughly March to to to, uh, to May. So it's not so much the successful season's cut short, but just like the season has just been paused and, and you don't know where it is. And like, for example, I, I have I did awfully in nationals last year, which carries loads of points. So that it gets an additional multiplier in the in the, the ranking. So whereas like it's not something that I'm particularly stressed about because my ranking is, you know, good without any input from nationals. Um, but for example, I got a lot of points from one of the Grand Prix, which is no longer happening. So God knows, you know, how that all pans out. Uh, I think it's. Uh, I, th I think it's one of these things that it, it more is a question of your general mentality. Yeah, so it's it's a really interesting one because <clears throat> I think I think the the uh, to domestically everything is just paused and they don't know and that's fine. Um, uh, internationally, it's more complex because because of the Olympic qualifying cycle. So they. Uh, they essentially have, so it doesn't run ex according to a season bizarrely there's one or two events that carry over from last season and they consequently don't count at the end of this season towards the Olympic qualifying so they were kind of close to the end of the cycle but they hadn't actually finished it and and then on top of that they have to do the zonals uh, so every fencing there are four fencing zones so uh, Europe Africa um, Americas and uh, Asia Pacific and like they all get to send one additional person in each weapon to the Olympics from countries that haven't already qualified. So it's sort of a, a mop up chance for the likes of, you know, the UK and Ireland to to try and get someone qualified for the Olympics. Uh, and so that's obviously a really big deal for those people who are who are, uh, you know, kind of in the running for that. And so they kind of can't just squeeze everything together. So the announcements they've made have just been very fair that they'll make sure those events happen when they happen they'll make sure that everybody gets uh you know a chance to do all the other qualifying competitions before that and they're also going to make sure they're, they're not going to start until every country uh, or every athlete from every country has a reasonable chance to to give it a go so unless this really you know keeps people keeps you know every at least one country properly shut down um, I guess they could run into trouble with the net with the Olympics in 2021, but at some point, they'll, you know, they'll kick it up again. They'll run a couple of World Cups, which don't count as qualifying. Then they'll do qualifying, and then they'll do the zonals, and then it'll all be done. And then after that, it matters less because then they can basically just mess around with the schedule as much as they like because it isn't people's futures on the line in the same way. So again, it's it'll work out as it works out. But but they've been very fair, I think. Yeah, so uh, it's slightly so yeah, planning my next season. So so no, in a sort of strict sense of the, you know, that over the summer they announce the following season schedule, but you know it roughly corresponds to the the set established pattern, uh, and I guess that's all going to be messed around quite substantially because, yeah, because of the obvious reasons really. Um, but as and when this all resumes, uh, so you know, I plan to go to Argentina to do the World Cup there. I'll I, I'll go and do that. When that happens um if you know there's the opportunity to try and tie it in with the other south american event then you know if it, if i can make it work i'll try and make that work too um i'm you know I, i'm not too fussed about uh specific times and dates it's you know just when they know they'll they'll do it and i'll 
I'll plan on that basis. But I think that's true again of just everything in life at the moment. Uh, you know, all sort of gigs and you know theatre shows and anything. You know, weddings and God, everything in the diary is all up in the air. So I think I think fencing is no different in that sense. Yes. So yes, but not enough. I think is probably the answer. So I uh, my club in um, my Brixton, my London club, Brixton FC, is um, in training sessions at the normal time for us, but they're just much shorter. So they're um, 40 minutes to half, uh, 40 minutes to an hour and they're constrained. So they're not fencing sessions per se. They are um, a bit of footwork, um, which is good, but they're also, you know, strength conditioning that kind of stuff um doing squats with household objects like you know if you've got paperweights or something kicking around you know using them instead of a medicine ball so stuff like that i have uh, been doing some of them but uh to be honest i've been more doing my own stuff uh so with so the, the physical limitations are really that you can do as much footwork as you like and you can you know hit a lunging pad as much as you like so i'm quite i'm lucky here i've got um in my family home so i've got um a garden and a patio to uh put put a lunging pad up and uh, uh we also we're we're a rock climbing family so we've got uh like big crash mats for bouldering which again serve as like a good foot hit target and uh you know you can put them you can do lots of things with them but <clears throat> you know for example you can't do uh hit to wrist hit to chest uh, so you know that you know that kind of core activity is is missing um so it's quite constrained you know stop hits you have to almost fake and imagine by getting too close and then stop hitting away and stuff like that so it, it is a bit constrained and i'm i'm taking it more as a time to try and for example uh change those quarters um instincts so going back slightly to the international thing is going to the internationals is really uh, exposed me as not having that good of a, a close quarters game uh, you know it's, it's pretty solid but actually the number of times these guys are just just they're better and ahead of me and they've got another remise and they've got that kind of thing so I've really been focusing on actually well what you can do is practice that thing of once the situation is triggered go in go in go in go in go in change the line change the line change the line um, and and so my hope is to come out of this with you know, a, a sort of a new onus on the skill set, as it were, um, and accepting that actually things like being able to track a target or, you know, hit an arm or flick someone to wrist or something like that is that's going to be a bit rusty and diminished. But hopefully other things that maybe I don't work on quite so much, I can can get something out of. Um, in terms of then actually, sorry, you're saying, uh, but in terms of like opportunities and stuff, I think it. Um, so, yeah, that's a that's that's a cost. But um, the other one is for me. Um, I'm using it as a bit of a one to try and get my body back in order, if that makes sense. So, you know, not to sound too, um, yeah, sort of, uh, I don't even know what the word is, but, um, <laughs> but really it's like actually doing, doing a bit of stretching, um, doing like the foam roller, making sure like, I've, like I've got a persistent little twinge in one of my hip flexors. That's like, okay, what can I do to try and actually get that fixed or just get that rested by the time then whenever all this is is done I can you know competing kicks off again that actually I'm you know kind of recharge the batteries are recharged um, because you know you won't get this kind of opportunity again to do that. So I'm not putting too much pressure on it so my my broad target is to like keep enjoying things and to as I say have a couple of things that I'm working on so trying to do you know two three good sessions a week on the lunging pad and of those to really kind of back to basics get the hand high get the hand out first uh you know be able to transition into close quarters um to be able to you know for example like test the legs do just explosive lunges for 60 seconds see how many you can do that kind of thing so there's lots of little mini challenges and games and there's a broader overarching theme of things that i want to do um, I'm someone who's always found lunging pad work quite hard in a way because, you know, it's very clear when the coach is there and it's OK, right now we can do stop hits. And now here's here's working on a, you know, cease disengage, whatever it is. Whereas with a lunging pad, it's very much more all in your own head. 
and there isn't that external stimulus of someone doing it for you or or, or someone sort of that you can bounce off um so so in that sense it's i'm reducing it a bit to to things that i really want to focus on and things that i think are are you you can do valuably um in this but uh for example i'm more setting myself a point of uh you know like it's really sunny it's lovely at the moment so every day i'm doing good active physical things to sort of keep myself generally in good shape uh, i'm doing a lot of running relative to what i've ever done in life before uh, you know i've always sort of done it around exam times and stuff when there's no other sport to be done um, and so in that sense it's kind of follows a pa follows pattern but i'm doing longer distances and, and so on uh, and it's it, it i think it's good for that thing of you know being tired throughout a day uh, you're not necessarily taking very much out of yourself at any given moment but actually once you've done you know a pool and a couple of de's or you know when you've done whatever it is eight ten miles it's actually the body feels a bit different and having that you know keeping the keeping the keeping the bot form up keeping everything like that is is important um and uh and then yeah you know also so personally i, I you know do quite a other sports as well so i've been knocking a hockey ball around with my dad quite a bit and, and stuff like that so uh you know it's not to say that i'm abandoning the fencing for that but i'm not it's not i'm not doing those things where i have the opportunity now to do them um at the expense of the fencing sort of keeping the core of the fencing that i can and the rest of it just be happy to pick up and keep myself fit so it's a hard one to answer in that it's you know shining shining a turd kind of kind of thing but uh it's good to to do different things uh in the sense of so yeah for example getting the running going and trying to get a bit more base base stamina fitness into the body in a way that i might have had before um and then yeah to to take something you know relatively uh like reactions are really hard like you can't you can't learn a reaction in a sense in an intellectual way you have to obviously make sure you're doing the right thing but you really make it so that when when the situation happens you do the right thing you know stop hits are rarely actually conscious um so so you know for example so so then with the, with something like the close quarters it, it really is something where uh actually try a hundred times you know in round the head round the back pa, round the back um it, it's just working that in and working that in and grinding it in and then eventually you know hopefully actually when when normality resumes to whatever extent that it happens on the piste and 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 it's been worth it now unless you know unless they come out of this saying systemically the human race can't touch one another in the same way as they did before um i personally expect the the things like the handshake to come back in and uh you know and particularly because you know fencing is not unique to this but you know sport in general you you put a lot of effort and intensity into something uh, and someone is your you know he is your opponent during during that activity um but then particularly something like fencing is i have to say i find that the only person who finds who, who really understands what you've just been through is the other guy um on on, on the piece uh so you know when you when you've done a 14 all and uh you know you've each been trying some stuff and then someone gets the last hit it's like obviously in some sense the last person in the world you want to to, to spend time with is is your man who's just beaten you or whatever but at the same time how many times how often have you seen people collapse into one another's arms and you know sort of give a hug of recognition of like christ that was a that was an amazing match or you know that was a that was a close run thing you know i guess same with boxing stuff like that so um i think that's quite instinctively human and instincts can be overrun but yeah that 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 feels like that's part of sport and that will that will crack on when it can that concludes the quarantine time q a series Thank you so much to everyone who submitted a question and of course to Lucy and Max for answering them. I hope you've enjoyed. Stay safe.